All right, so in this lesson, we're going to look at a drained triaxial compression stress path. And triaxial compression is, in some ways, much more straightforward than simple shear because we're always dealing with the specimen rotated in the principal plane directions. We're keeping the horizontal pressure constant and increasing the vertical pressure. So the major principal stress is vertical and sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and they're horizontal. But in some ways, it's, a, it's more complicated. Okay, the simple shear stress path was vertical. P prime stayed the same. In a triaxial compression stress path, P prime is increasing. So uh, let's take a look at how I came to that conclusion. Um, first, this is the initial consolidation condition, the initial effective stress condition before we start shearing the soil. Uh, so triaxial compression tests can be done using isotropic consolidation. That's where the vertical and horizontal pressures are the same and that's actually the most common setup but we could also anisotropically consolidate a triaxial compression specimen with a bigger vertical pressure than horizontal pressure and so i'm leaving in here the ability to have some kind of k naught condition but keep in mind that k naught is usually one for a triaxial compression test we're usually keeping it isotropically consolidated so uh, here we have uh, Q naught and P naught prime. Um, notice that if K naught is one, if we consolidate isotropically, then one minus K naught is zero and Q naught is zero. So if we consolidate with the same stress in all directions, there's no shear, right? There's no, the Mohr circle doesn't have a diameter yet. Um, but P naught prime is always this equation, sigma V naught prime times one plus two K naught over three uh, if k naught is 1, then it's just equal to sigma v naught prime. Now, what we do in a triaxial compression test, this is the stress tensor under a state of shear, is, is that we add some pressure to the vertical component, right? So we're adding a deviatoric stress, delta sigma d, to the uh, vertical direction and keeping the horizontal pressures the same. So that's the most common drain triaxial compression stress path. So uh, if we go in and calculate Q using our equation for the deviatoric stress invariant, what you will find is that Q is equal to Q naught plus delta sigma D. So for an isotropically consolidated test, Q is just directly equal to the deviator stress, right? If we start out with some initial deviator stress, then we have to add to it the, the change in deviator stress to get the total value of Q. All right, now the, the tricky part is that P prime is changing, right? Um, before, for the simple shear test, sigma V prime and sigma H prime were staying the same, and we were adding shear stress, therefore P prime stayed the same. Now we're adding vertical pressure, so we're changing P prime. So our definition of P prime is the average of these three, so you would get sigma V naught prime plus delta sigma D, that's that term, and then plus two times K naught times sigma V naught prime, that's the sum of those terms, and then you divide by three. Right, and what we get is that we can simplify that down. P prime is equal to P naught prime plus delta sigma D over three. Okay, so what that means is that our stress path is not vertical anymore. P prime is increasing, and it's important to kind of understand by how much. So what we want to do is calculate this this um, gradient dQ dP prime. And it's easy enough to do that. All we have to do is compute dq d delta sigma d and then dp prime d delta sigma d and take the ratio of those two. And we get one divided by one third, which is three, right? So dq dp prime for a triaxial compression test is three. What that means is that we're starting off on some k naught line. Usually it would be down here, right? I'm just adding a k naught there for fun. Then the stress path always has an angle of three to one, where three is vertical, dq, and one is horizontal, dp, dp prime. So there you have it. That's the triaxial compression stress path in qp prime space. All right, so what we should do now is practice drawing these stress paths. So um, here's a set of four plots. We have drain triaxial compression stress paths. And I'm going to assume k naught is one here, so we're isotropically consolidating the soil. Um, and I'm going to draw two, the one that's loose of critical state and then the one that's dense of critical state. And what I recommend doing now is pausing the video, making this sketch. I've put in the initial points for you. Maybe you could add in the um, dashed lines so that everything is lined up properly. You know, and then we have this dashed line. 
So the four initial points are there, and I want you to try and draw the, uh, the stress paths in all four of these plots, and then you can unpause the video and watch me do it and get some, some feedback on how this works. So go ahead and push pause, and I'll see you in just a minute. All right, so I bet you probably didn't push pause and you just kept watching, but anyway, if you did, good for you. Thanks for doing that. But let's go ahead and draw these stress paths now. So what I'm gonna do is start up here in the upper left quadrant, because we've just derived an equation for the slope of that line in QP prime space. That's the thing that we know the most directly. So we know it's gonna go at a slope of three to one, and I'm just gonna draw it in here like this, and then it failed right there. And this, this uh, stress path in QP prime space, three to one slope, right? Well, now what we can do, we know that this one's at failure, Ah, the other thing too, if it's elusive critical, it does not mobilize a peak friction angle. So we know it, that this line is not going to go higher than the critical state line and come back down. We're just going to approach the critical state line and stop there. Um, so what we can do now is take this line and sketch a dashed line down to the critical state line. Okay, so we're going to start at this point and end at that point. And it turns out that this line often has a little bit of a curve to it. Um, it kind of asymptotically approaches critical state, and so there's a higher rate of, of contraction at the beginning. So it, it's concave a little bit like this, and then it reaches critical like that. So here's the, the arrows indicate the direction of that path. Okay, and then easy enough, we draw a horizontal dashed line to form the asymptote that we will approach um, here at high strain, and then E versus epsilon Q just comes down. Whoops, having a hard time drawing today. Here we go. Just comes down and asymptotically approaches. Ah, that's not very good either. My computer, see that my hand has room. There we go. All right, so there's our space, the epsilon Q space. And then the last one is also fairly easy, right? We'll draw a horizontal line over from the peak point or the point at failure, and we end up with a curve like that. Oops, I drew it too high. Just erase it. There we go. Try it again. Okay, now we're at critical state. All right, so that was loose of critical. Uh, now, pause it again. Try and draw the one that's dense of critical, and I'll see you in just a minute. All right, welcome back. Let's do the dense of critical one now. Again, we're going to start up here in the upper left quadrant. And we know a couple of things. The stress path has to have a slope of three to one. Now that it's dense of critical, we also have to mobilize a peak friction angle that's bigger than the critical state friction angle. So if you want to, the first thing you could do is draw in that peak friction angle line. You know, it could come up like this, and this will be M peak. And then uh, we can draw the stress path. Right, And I'm going to draw it offset a little bit to the left because they, they would actually be right on top of each other, but it's hard to draw with a green on top of blue and have it be clear. So I'm going to draw it just immediately to the left. So we go up at 3 to 1. We come reach the peak up here. And then we come back down to critical. Right, So it's going up and then coming back down. Uh, okay, and then if you want, you can draw the... Um, stress strain curve next you know you can go about this any way you want it's just important to draw uh, this one first because that's where we know what the stress path looks like so now this one is going to be initially a little bit stiffer and it's going to reach the peak and then come down and reach critical state um, okay and then down here oh i didn't draw the initial state but it's going to be down here right and we are starting out dense of critical state. So at a void ratio that's, uh, that's drawn there, here's our, our point. And again, we are going to end up at this same point, right? But we're gonna go a little bit beyond it. So let me draw this line down now, right? At peak, we are gonna be at a, 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 a little bit higher P prime value. So we have to come tangent to that line and then end up here. And we do have to, um, and, you know, we know that this one's going to be initially a little bit contractive and then come up and reach critical state like that. 
So this, this stress path is actually probably the most complicated one to draw, the EP prime one. Um, so we have to come down initially, we have to go tangent to this line, and then we have to end up there. So it's, it's just this little kind of curled stress path like that, and it's going this direction. All right, so if you got it right, that's very good, good for you. Um, maybe go back and, and try it again. You could rewind the video to that point, try sketching it again. Uh, it really does take practice to kind of uh, be able to get these things right eventually.